Hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Dr. Pepper. I live and work here in the UK as a doctor and I do videos for international students and international medical graduates who are transitioning to study or to practice in the UK. If you're new to this channel, please hit on the subscribe button on the lower right hand corner. Subscribe to my channel so you'll be the first to know when there's a new video. There will always be different takes when it comes to working in the UK for the NHS, for junior doctors or working in the private sector. In this video, I'm going to be giving you the differences and the advantages and disadvantages between working for the NHS and working for the private hospitals so you can make an informed decision especially if this is your first job as a junior doctor in the uk i hope you enjoy most junior doctors in the uk will either work for the nhs which is the national health service which is the public funded healthcare service in the uk or they can choose to work for the private hospitals and most of them come in through recruitment the agencies there are so many private hospitals in the uk and most of them work as franchises like the BMI, Spire, Northfield hospitals and their recruitment are usually done through agencies and most of them recruit from abroad. Now let's start with the private hospitals. Student doctors are recruited to work for the private hospitals through private recruitment agencies and these doctors are recruited to work as resident medical officers. As a resident medical officer and RMO, you are expected to have two years post MBBS or post medical school graduation experience for you to be eligible to work in the private hospitals. And the tasks you'll be doing are basic duties that are expected of a junior doctor who has just finished his internship, house job or foundation year two. Also, the private hospitals, before you start, you will have a period of shadowing, usually around five days to a week where you'll be working under a resident medical officer who is already like established or old already in the hospital that you're going to work. So you shadow him or her for the period of one week where you learn every or should I say like most of the things that you will be doing as your duty because the rotor pattern for the private hospital, most of them actually will be you're working one week on and one week off you're gonna be living in the hospital for a full week and after one week you're off then you come back for another one week so technically you're working for two weeks in a month so let's talk about the task a resident medical officer working in a private hospital in the uk is expected to be conversant with pre and post-op management of mostly surgical patients although sometimes you might be working on medical wards or even in psychiatry you'll be expected to be very very conversant and familiar with pain management of surgical patients doing some blood works venipuncture catheterization reading and interpreting ecgs and also comfortable use of the drug formula which is the bns you will also be expected to be very very conversant with attending to emergency situations and resuscitation as well that's why before you start the job you will be enlisted to do pre-employment assessment exams and training basically ALS, BLS, mandatory training and do some exams and upon passing that then you will be posted to a hospital where you'll be working the job pattern involves one week on one week off so you are working 24 hours for one week in the hospital and the next week you are off thereafter you come back and resume for another full week so technically you are actually working 24 hours every day for one week but i don't think people actually work 24 hours every day one week so what happens is you have some protected time between 11 pm to 6 am in so many of those hospitals where they don't get you actively involved except there is a life-threatening emergency you're working basically during the day up until 11 pm it's not like you're working all through anyways so you have tasks that you have to do sometimes you need to do what on your own you need to attend to this patients who come back from theater and all of that then when the job is a bit lighter and when there's not much to do then you go to your room and in your room you're provided with a room a comfortable room like a hotel standard you know you have food uh, three square meal you know you have laundry facilities and everything provided for you so you are very well taken care of for the period that you are working. The other advantage of working in the private hospital is that the pay is good because you are technically working for two weeks in a month and you get paid for a month. The hospitals are very busy during the daytime and during the weekdays. Weekends are a lot easier because most of them don't do surgeries during the weekend. So you have the weekend to study your books if you're practicing or studying for any exam. So you got lots of time to do all of that and you also have the weekends to rest more or less. The other advantage I find in working for the private sector also is that you got a good sort of social network because you're working with nurses, with cooks, with chefs. So you kind of build a relationship with them because you're with all these people almost on a daily basis, 24 hours a day. So they kind of help you to uh, make you a bit more comfortable and feel a bit more relaxed whilst you're on duty. There's usually a resident medical officer who you are handing over to and who you are taking over from as well. So sometimes if you feel you've got some commitment and you want to swap your shifts, that is an arrangement that should be done between you and the 
other resident medical officer and you can easily swap your shifts and all you need to do is just to inform your agency about the swap that's a lot easier compared to the nhs which we'll talk about which will include you getting the admin involved and giving pre-notice of about six weeks before you are able to either swap your shifts or go on holidays and you know all those uh, sort of intrigue cases the down part here and working for the private hospital is actually the unhealthy long hours of work so imagine you're working 24 hours in a day and that's gonna happen for a full week it's, it's so exhausting it's, it's so stressful but the way I look at it is so you come in on Monday you're full of enthusiasm you have high energy high spirit you start working Tuesday Wednesday Thursday Thursday Friday you run out of steam Saturday Sunday is not that busy you're trying to recuperate and on Monday Monday, you're looking forward to going home and that's the exciting part and you come back the next week and the cycle just continues otherwise it's very very stressful and if you can't if you're not built for such stress then you probably will not be able to cope and some hospitals have very enormous huge workload so some hospitals have up to 30 40 50 bed spaces and you are literally going to be the only doctor taking care of all those patients so because the way it works is most of the hospitals have just you the junior doctor as a resident medical officer there is no middle grade nothing the next set of doctors you have are consultants who actually own the patients and do the surgeries and you have anesthetists and you have nurses working with you so when the surgeons do their jobs and they leave the patients are handed over to you so you are solely responsible for all the patients so that means you need to be competent and confident to handle whatever comes your way so you also need to know the point at which you need to escalate issues and cases that you seem to need a second opinion or are beyond your control to the consultant in a way there's really not that much support so you are basically working as a loaner but working in private hospital is actually an easy way of getting a job in the uk because it's faster the whole process is done by recruitment agencies and they are ready and happy to help process all your documents help do your pre-employment checks sometimes they even help you with flights and get you accommodation when you come into the uk they make you comfortable you go through all the mandatory trainings and courses that you need to do you have period of shadowing and you get comfortable food accommodation whilst you're on duty you actually get looked after very well you know by the private hospitals which i find a bit uh, of a soft landing just to introduce you into the uk working environment gradually now let's talk about the nhs working for the nhs is exciting it is fun and i think it's the goal of so many doctors because this is a work environment where you are exposed to a whole range of other doctors at different levels junior doctors middle grade consultants non-clinical staff and you have that synergy of everyone working and access to information to educational materials most times you'll be assigned to a clinical supervisor an academic supervisor who will push you and monitor your progress and also help you in your career progression and whilst you're working in the nhs you also have access to materials and you know information that will help you decide on what specialty if you haven't made up your mind already what specialty you want to go into in terms of training so these are some of the advantages I see working for the NHS and also you have access to latest guideline procedures you know you work with protocols standardized treatment protocols and you are actually part of your team unlike when you work in the private hospital you are basically the only doctor most times as the only junior doctor and every other person is a consultant who you don't really have a direct contact with so you only escalate or call the consultants when things are beyond your control but in the nhs there's that synergy and that opportunity for you to learn to ask questions to work as a team with other doctors at different levels i see that as a very positive improvement that's not to say the nhs is without disadvantages so the nhs is very very stressful the rota system is a bit very awkward especially if you're working a and &E, you have very crazy rota system and it's very very super super stressful so sometimes you might even be working extra although you get paid working extra as a local but that you know leaves you burnt out stress and in terms of the wages the pay is inadequate compared to working for the private hospitals so inflation rate is high cost of living is high and your pay doesn't really increase you know working in the nhs so it's not conventional with the effort you put in but yeah that is it you can't have everything i guess and it's very hard to maintain a work-life balance in the nhs it's very 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 hard the work is intense so you are literally working almost all the time you probably don't even have enough time to do your personal study if you're preparing for exam except when you take your annual leave or your study leave so these are the things to consider when you want to decide on choosing what job to do especially as your first job 
as a junior doctor in the UK, either to work for the NHS or to work for the private hospitals. Thank you guys for watching this video. And once again, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please click on that subscribe button on the lower right hand corner and tap on the notification bell so you put the first to know when there's a video. And if you have any comment questions, drop them in the comment section. I'll be responding to you as well you can also follow me on social media the handles are displayed on the screen there on instagram on twitter that's where i am most of the time and it's easier for me to respond to you on those platforms bye